The scripture today is from John chapter 1, 14 through 18. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, This is the one of whom I said, He comes after me is greater than me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son who is at the Father's side, has made God known. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue to worship, I invite you to take a moment to recall a time when God's presence was real to you. A moment when God's love was made visible or tangible to you. Maybe even close your eyes for a moment. Imagine that moment, remember that moment, perhaps the time when you sensed God's holy presence in the ordinary things of life. Where were you? Who were you with? What did you see or hear? What did you taste? and touch. All right. Now I know that that is not how we normally start a sermon. And I know that might stretch our comfort zones just a little bit. But I really do invite you to hold that image, whatever it is for you, in mind for the next few moments as we explore together what it means for God to be present with us and how we participate in the presence of God through our Christian service and witness. And this is the second week of a short worship series in this in-between time as we change seasons and head towards Advent. It's a worship series that focuses on the commitments that we make to participate in the work of God in this place through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Now those are familiar words to many of us who have been a part of this community or the part of the United Methodist community for any length of time. They are words that we say, commitments that we make when we join together with a particular United Methodist community. Will you faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will, we say. They are also commitments we reaffirm together every time we have a baptism, or every time this altar rail is full of confirmation students professing and claiming their faith as their own. We say together, with you we renew our vows to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So for many of those, us, those words may be familiar so familiar that we might not take time always to let them sink deep into our souls, to think about what they mean. And so we're taking these few weeks to do just that. Last week, Scott talked about the power of presence, the power of showing up, not just committing to be present in worship, although we are glad to see your smiling faces, but presence to and with each other in the big moments of life and in the small moments of life. In those times when we know exactly what to say and in those times when words aren't enough and we simply show up for each other. Today we expand on that theme of showing up in visible and tangible ways. And we start from the very beginning, we start with God. For showing up is exactly what God does, what God did. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, This is the one whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. 
God, the only Son who is at the Father's side, has made God known. God showed up. God's presence became visible in Jesus Christ. The big theological word for that is incarnated, took on flesh. God became enfleshed. But I kind of just like the word, God showed up. God's love became visible in the ordinary things of life. You see, Jesus walked along ordinary, dusty roads. He did human things. He washed in ordinary water. He drank from wells. He bathed in ordinary water. He shared meals with friends. He ate together. He drank together with friends. He did all of those ordinary things. And in doing so, he made God's presence visible. It's the mystery of our faith that we give witness to. Even if we don't fully understand it, God became one of us. Now, this is the point at which, at least in my own head, as I have a conversation with you, I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's well and good, Reverend Jennifer. Well and good for those who were there, who ate and drank and walked with Jesus in person, those who could actually see him and touch him and hear him, those who could sit at his feet and listen to his teachings, those who could see his miracles, that's all well and good for them, but what about us? What about me? How is God's love made tangible, made visible to us? Well, we also meet God in ordinary things. We also drink and feast together at this table. We also wash in ordinary water. Because God shows up in the ordinary means and does extraordinary things. The holy in the ordinary is simply a way of saying, God shows up to us, choosing to use ordinary means. That's amazing. And good news for us, because I think as humans, we need that sense that we can taste and touch and feel God. A few years ago, I think it's been about three now, actually, when Pastor Scott first arrived and we first had conversations about feasting at this table, sharing a meal together every week in worship. I was one of those folks that first said, well, that would be amazing, but what about this? And what about this? And who's going to set this up? And what if people don't like it? Right? <laughs> That's usually my role, conversations. And here's the thing. It only took a couple of weeks of us doing this together for me to realize that it would transform us as a community. It would transform me. Because as we come forward and we receive, there's also a physical touch. There's that moment when our hands touch, when we look into each other's eyes, that moment when we touch that bread, that moment when we're connected to each other in ways that would not happen otherwise. The holy in the ordinary. God using ordinary moments to do extraordinary things. But of course, God's presence isn't confined to worship. And we don't have to be in this building for God's love to be visible to us. So where do we find God's love for us visible out there? In meals shared with friends? In that moment when someone gives us a hug? Or think back to that moment that you imagined or recalled at the beginning of worship, beginning of this message? 
how is God present to you in that moment? I'm willing to bet you that many of those moments involved nature, God's creation. Some of them involved the touch of another part of God's creation, another human being. You see, that's how God shows up to us. God shows up using ordinary things, ordinary vessels like us. That is why our membership commitments include service and witness. Because just as God chose to be made visible in Jesus Christ, God chooses to be made visible through us. Our words and our actions, but also the way we be in the world, the way we exist together as a community in this place and out in the world. And that's amazing and terrifying and amazing. And it's also a risk for God. Because ordinary vessels like us get it wrong sometimes. But God took that risk and takes that risk. And that, too, is amazing good news. Now, we often talk about experiencing God's presence in the ordinary things here in worship, in those sacramental moments of <coughs> communion and baptisms and singing together. And we also talk about taking that and taking it out into the world through our service to others. But of course, we don't bring God's presence out into the world with us. God is already there. We never bring God's presence into a particular space. We simply and powerfully incarnate, make visible God's presence and love that is already there. God's visible presence in the world is us. The church, capital C, as Scott said the last week, the church universal. <clears throat> so God is already present, but we have this duty, this commitment to help make that love and presence visible. Through things we traditionally think of as service, building homes, going on mission trips, working with Habitat for Humanity, all good things but also through the simple things, through shared meals and cups of coffee, and also through those things that we tend to simply think of as part of our daily lives, those things that we don't even think about as being part of our service. Things that we get paid for in some cases, things that we don't, they're all part of our service and our witness in the world. They're all part of the ways in which we make God visible. And yes, they are also all to always places where risk occurs because we risk being in community with others. We risk getting it wrong. But we know that the risk is worth it. As I was preparing for today, I ran into something I had never seen before. It was a prayer in our hymnal. And I feel like I have flipped through our hymnal more often than I probably should admit, because as a kid, when I was listening to sermons, I usually flipped through the hymnal. I had never seen this. It's a prayer called Bread and Justice. And I'm going to read it through for us, offering a few of my thoughts once. And then I'm going to offer it to us again, simply to hear to fill in the blanks ourselves. O oh God, just as the disciples heard Christ's words of promise and began to eat the bread and drink the wine and the suffering of a long remembrance and the joy of a hope, grant that we may hear your word spoken in each thing of everyday affairs. Coffee on the table in the morning. I think about the over coffee group that meets every Thursday morning at parties. We have lively discussion. And every time we meet, I see God's face in somebody. Or I think about the coffee shared at our Christmas Day meal as new community bonds are formed. A coffee on a table in the morning. The simple gesture of opening a door to go out. The shouts of children in the parks. I think about our children shouting and playing on the playground out here or on the playgrounds in our city parks 
after they've been fed at Food for Kids. The shouts of children in parks. A familiar song sung by an unfamiliar voice. A friendly tree that has not yet been cut down. O oh God, may simple things speak to us of your mercy and tell us that life can be good. And may these sacramental gifts make us remember those who do not receive them, who have their lives cut every day in bread absent from the table, in the door of the hospital, the prison that does not open, in sad children, feet without shoes, eyes without hope, in deserts where once there was life. Christ was also sacrificed. May we learn that we participate in the saving sacrifice of Christ when we participate in the suffering of his little ones. That sit for a second. Friends, being church means serving others. It also means acting with compassion and justice. Many of you know that I am an ordained United Methodist deacon. That's why this stool looks like it is, hangs from one shoulder to the hip as a reminder of the towel that Jesus had, a reminder of Jesus watch, washing feet in servanthood. We talk about deacons in the United Methodist Church as ordained clergy who lead in ministries of word and service, compassion and justice. So part of my role with us, the thing that gives me great joy is nudging us. Yes, nudging us to serve, although we do that well already. But nudging us, myself included, to also think about how our service relates to compassion and justice. To nudge us towards asking those hard questions about where there is injustice in the world and how our witness, how our service, how our incarnation of God's love interacts with those places. So I invite you to hear this prayer again. Thinking through those questions. Oh God, just as the disciples heard Christ's words of promise and began to eat the bread and drink the wine, the suffering of a long remembrance and the joy of a hope, grant that we may hear your word spoken in each thing of everyday affairs coffee on the table in the morning. Who are you having coffee with? The simple gesture of opening a door to go out. What doors are you going in and out every day? Who do you know that experience those same doors as barriers? The shouts of children in the parks Whose children aren't playing? Who is missing from our playgrounds? A familiar song sung by an unfamiliar voice, a friendly tree that has not yet been cut down. May simple things speak to us of your mercy, O oh God, and tell us that life can be good. And may these sacramental gifts make us remember those who do not receive them, who have their lives cut every day in bread absent from the table the door of the hospital or the prison, the nursing home that does not open. And sad children, feet without shoes, eyes without hope, in deserts where there once was life. What deserts have you experienced? Who do you know that knows that desert experience? Christ was also sacrificed, and may we learn that we participate in the saving sacrifice of Christ, when we participate in the suffering of his little ones. 